Hey everybody, Jacqueline's Painting here with the next video in our Battle Ready Indomitus series. I've got another Blade Guard veteran, cool little 3D printed helmet, and this guy is going to be a Dark Angel. Not just any Dark Angel, he's going to be part of the Death Wing. Really, really cool that the Blade Guard are officially part of the Death Wing now, and I love my Death Wing. And we're going to start this model off with some red brown primer from Steinle Res. Seen me use this before. I really like using uh, different colored primers for certain projects. So if I'm going to paint something like Deathwing that has a very light color scheme, uh, kind of a bone ivory color, uh, it can go a little darker, like a beige. But uh, whenever I do models with those types of colors, I like priming with a little bit of brown so that we can use that brown as our deepest shadow on those bone colors instead of a pure black where we'd have to base coat completely over that and then start layering up different colors to create shadows. This uh, just cuts out a step and I like how it looks. Um, I have another video where I do a uh, aggressor as the Deathwing and I use different colors, kind of some different methods, but starting off on the same spot with this red brown primer. And the first color we're going to use through the airbrush is some golden yellow. I'm going to very lightly spray this through the airbrush with plenty of flow improver. And uh, I'm going to be a little bit heavier with the airbrushing steps on this guy than I have been in other projects where I have a really rapid transition between dark and light with a lot of contrast. Uh, we're doing something a little different. This is a little bit of a different style of doing airbrushing where instead of creating really dynamic shadows, everything is going to have some gradient to it, but it's going to be a little bit flatter. Um, and the end product is going to look a lot cleaner. It's going to be a lot less grimdark, a lot less comic booky, um, kind of similar to uh, the heavy metal style. So after that golden yellow, I'm going to pull out some olive flesh. This is a uh, slightly less bright beige bone color than an ivory. I don't want to go to straight ivory until I get into doing some edge highlights on this guy, but for the initial uh, airbrush stuff, that's as bright as we need it to be. And after that, we've got some green black or black green. I forget which, <laughs> but it's it's a black green or a green black. Um, and I'm going to base in the tab art section with this really, really nice green. Uh, it's a very dark color, but base coating it over the bone colors that we've airbrushed will put some vibrancy into it because we're putting those layers of paint over a lighter backdrop rather than a darker backdrop. And I think it took me um, about three coats to get a nice solid opaque black green. Uh, sometimes when working with lighter colors, you kind of have the opposite problem of working with light colors where you want to base coat something dark over top of it. And because that base is so bright, it makes it kind of uh, splotchy in the thin areas because you can see where it's lighter and darker in some some aspects. It's kind of that um, really poor way that the GW contrast paint works where it looks splotchy because there's all these random light and dark areas uh, because the paint just doesn't cover in a, in a singular coat. So I think it was about three coats, just working really thin paint those on there to have a nice even smooth coat for that tabard. And then I'm going to pull out some scale 75. This is old copper. It's a nice red content bronzy copper color. It's going to contrast nicely with the beige armor. Uh, one trouble you have with the Deathwing is that you're kind of limited in your metallics because um, a bright shiny gold doesn't really show up very well on the bone colored armor. And then if you can't do shiny gold, then you have to get into like brass and bronze. And so you want to pick like a, a brass or a bronze that has a nice color content to it that is contrasting with the other colors. And so that's why I like this old copper because that has a lot of red content to it. It's a nice sort of like reddish brown metal. And it base coats really nicely and it pops on the armor there. Uh, I've seen other Deathwing works, uh, workups where they use uh, like a darker steel color or like a black metallic that looks kind of cool too. So, you know, season to your taste, but we're using the old copper here just as a nice reddish bronze. I think it pops really nicely on uh, the beige armor. 
And then we're going to base coat in the holster and the belt and the few little pouches and stuff he has with some dark golden yellow. Really like this as a base leather color if you're going to use um, kind of a more tanned leather rather than a darker, more stained leather. Or a, you know, just like a lighter leather color. I think it goes well with the beige armor and also pops over top of that really dark green whereas a stained dark leather or a black leather would kind of blend in too much and then we're going to do all the joint pieces i'm going to show you guys a trick for doing cool like rubber colors now usually I will do just black paint and then highlight that up, but I wanted to show you guys how to make like a black rubber color. And I've got blue, black, soylent green, and some black paint. And like you saw in the little subtitle there, it's about half and half with the blue back and the green. Um, you can sub whatever colors you want. It's typically just like a, a really, really dark blue, black color and a primary green, and then add one or two or more drops of black paint depending on how much you're mixing up to darken it back down because it can kind of uh, gray out or brighten up a little bit too much with that primary green and as you can see when you paint that on it creates a really nice um, kind of black rubber color uh, another company that makes a paint just like this is secret weapon miniatures it's called tire black uh, so if you have some and you just want to mix your colors you can do that or if you just want to buy a pre-mixed paint i recommend that tire black from secret weapon miniatures it works just the same cool and so now that everything is base coated in that we're going to base coat for our battle ready standard i'm going to hit this guy with a coat of satin varnish just to seal that paint in and protect it because we're about to do some decals All right, so I've got some decals cut out here, ready to go. We've got our Deathwing symbol and an Elite symbol and a little campaign badge for his tilting shield. And I've got my Micro Saw and Micro Set. This is a two-part system for doing water slide decals. And um, funnily enough, we're not actually gonna use any water. I think the system works better when you don't use water at all. So first step is I'm gonna take some Micro Set. It's our decal set solution. And I'm gonna put that onto the back of our paper, let that soak through. And then when it's kind of soaking through, getting ready to release, I brush just a very small amount of the micro sol onto the top of our decal. And this is a solvent solution that is going to soften the plasticiness of that decal and allow it to bend and stretch rather than crinkle up and fold. And I usually only use the micro sol when I need to put it on a surface like the shoulder pad, which is a domed surface. It has curvature over two axis or more axis rather than a curved surface, which only has a curve over one axis. Whereas um, you would not need to put solvent on that decal because it would just lay flat over that surface. Because even though it's curved, it's technically a flat surface. Whereas the shoulder pad is domed, so it has those two axis of curvatures, which will make your decals kind of crinkle up um, in the in-betweens of those curves. And so that solvent will let it stretch and conform to that surface without crinkling up. And it makes it look like it's painted on, like decals are supposed to. All right, once that solution has totally dried off and set, I'm going to hit it with a gloss varnish. And that's going to seal in our decals and also set us up for doing our washes. All right, so I let this guy dry overnight. I typically like to let the gloss varnish set for uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour or just overnight if I'm at the stopping spot of a work session. And we're gonna do some washes. I've got our AK system here, some wash exhaust and the odorless thinner for all the AK products. And we're gonna be doing what's called a pen wash. And I've mentioned this a few times in some videos, but I think this is the first time that I'm actually demonstrating 
what a pen wash is. And this is just an older term. It's referring to kind of an OG scale modeling technique where you would take a needle pen and dip it into some wash or some ink and then touch that tip of that pen and let that little teeny tiny drop flow into like a panel line on an airplane or a tank or something like that, right? So super clean little contrast line. Well, you can still do that with miniatures. We're just doing it with a brush. And the gloss varnish makes the surface very hydrophobic. It helps the wash kind of flow over and get into the details where the surface tension of that liquid will hold it in place on those tiny little details. And then sometimes it'll kind of flow out. The AK system is already a very, very thin liquid. Like it's very, very fluid and wants to run and kind of spread over a flat surface as it dilutes itself. And so that's why I have our thinner here so that if it starts doing that, I can kind of clean it up. You can see me kind of using my fingers to smudge away some of that stuff as it flows onto a flat surface. Um, you can also use things like a little folded up piece of paper towel or a soft Q-tip to kind of clean those flat surfaces away after the wash has had time to set up a little bit in the details. One of the cool things about the um, exhaust wash in general is it does dry kind of shiny and it takes a while to kind of set up. So you have a lot of work time to be able to put it into the details, let it kind of dry up in that detail a little bit, and then you can uh, have like a damp Q-tip or just like lick the end of the Q-tip or whatever and rub away that exhaust wash on the flat surfaces where it's super nice and clean. And of course our gloss varnish is protecting all of that paint underneath so that way we're not scratching it off or rubbing it off with some of this thinner solution because it can kind of be a little aggressive on just regular paint. And yeah, I'm just kind of going around, finding those little teeny tiny details, touching my brush to it, letting that wash flow in there. Um, on bigger surfaces, like his, uh, the back of his legs and his shin guards was a little bit of an issue because they're so flat and the detail is kind of shallow. It wants to just sort of dilute itself and flow over that flat surface. And sometimes when the stuff dries, it can leave like a little, a little crusty line at the end of where it wants to dry up and you'll have to clean that off. So that was really the, the hardest part of, of any of this, but otherwise super easy, as long as you're just prepared for that to happen because it, it will happen, um, having you know some Q-tips. You can see I'm just using a little corner of my shop towel here to kind of clean those surfaces off nice and clean. All right, so that's all done. The exhaust wash is for our beige armor. I want to have that clean AF style for the Deathwing, um, but our metallics need to get shaded and that exhaust wash just isn't dark enough for most metallics. So I'm going to grab some of our multi-black from Mr. Hobby and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pen wash certain areas. So you can see rather than doing that blended oil wash look that I normally do, where I put it all over and then blend it out, I'm just using it like a normal black wash that I have a ton of control over and I'm just putting it right onto the metallic details, letting it flow right into all those details and sit there. And then if it starts to kind of smudge or um, kind of flow over any flat surfaces, again, I can just, you know, use my finger or Q-tip or something and just wipe it away before it dries up. Super, super easy. Once all those washes are dry, we're gonna seal them in there because you can rub it off with uh, your fingers or handling it in the rest of the painting process. So I just like to seal it up. And also I want a surface that paint will stick to. So I'm using an ultra matte. Just doing a light varnish. I don't want to severely matte out the metallic paints. So, you know, just a little spritz all around so that uh, I can paint on stuff, do some edge highlights and things like that later on. And here he is. Got that nice matte surface back. Our washes are no longer shiny. Uh, there are a few places like that decal there that's still a little shiny because I didn't do a full on varnish. I just want to be able to paint on top of all this. 
And I mean, this guy is battle ready, kind of like our Black Templar video. Um, I did not paint the sword because I'm going to leave that up to user choice. If you want a, a steel sword or you want to do like a power weapon effect, I have some videos on how to do all that too. But this guy is ready for the table. All our details are popping. We've got a nice ultra clean wash in all there. And he's ready for the tabletop. And then over time, you can go back and add more details once your army is fully painted. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. More Indominus content is on the way. So keep an eye out. I'll catch you next time.